ponytails. Red by Scribbler. Twilight Sparkle Plays with Dolls by Cyanide. It was a beautiful day in Equestria. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and Trixie was making out with Chrysalis. Hooves and tails were entwined in the shadow of a large tree deep in the Everfree Forest. Oh, Trixie. Chrysalis gasped as Trixie nuzzled one of the holes in her hooves. No pony must ever find out about our forbidden love. Trixie agrees, Trixie said, turning her attention to Chrysalis's gnarled horn. No pony must ever know that Trixie is in love with a changeling. Trixie could never stand the kind of negative public attention that would cause Trixie, Trixie, Trixie. Oh, I understand, Chrysalis said as she stroked a hoof through Trixie's mane. It would be devastating if I, the queen of the changelings, were discovered having a dalliance with a common attention horse. Yes, talk dirty to Trixie. Trixie has no dignity or self-respect. And then they made kissy noises at each other. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Uh, Twilight, what are you doing? Twilight shrieked and shot up from her bed a pair of plastic toys being telekinetically shoved under her pillow. Nothing, she said, trying to play as cool as she possibly could while clinging tenaciously to a bookshelf. Nothing at all. I certainly wasn't playing with my resin models or making fun of ponies I've humiliated in the past. Spike sighed and rubbed his face. Twilight, could you at least do that in the basement with the door closed? The first time I walked in on you like this, it was embarrassing. But now, it's just getting sad. Dropping from the bookshelf, Twilight walked over and flopped on her bed. She snorted. Stop making such a big deal about it. It's not as if you walked in on me. La 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 la, Spike shouted, clapping his claws over his ear holes. I am not hearing this. Remember the time I had to change the sheets because you... La 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 la, Spike shouted even louder before turning and running back down the stairs. Twilight smirked as she watched the little dragon eat a hasty retreat. Now then. Come with me, Trixie. Let us leave this forest and found a new empire of big jerks. But, <gasps> Trixie gasped, drawing away from Chrysalis. The Everfree is Trixie's home, now that she can never show her face in civilization again after being humiliated by the smartest, most powerful, most attractive unicorn ever. Trixie can never leave and will spend the rest of her life here, living under trees and eating pine cones, which are Trixie's favorite food. Trixie, Trixie, Trixie. But Trixie, Chrysalis said, raising a tentative hoof. What about us? It can never be. Trixie said, spinning, eyes brimming with tears that sparkled in the dappled sunlight. Trixie is far too self-centered to make the slightest sacrifice for any pony, and you are a gross, giant bug. But, Chrysalis said, as her own eyes welled with tears, I don't have to be a gross, giant bug. I could be a beautiful purple unicorn with the best cutie mark ever, who every pony likes and who keeps the neatest library anywhere in Equestria. Could it? Could it be? Trixie said between sobs. Would you do that for Trixie? Uh, hey! A muffled voice called from outside Twilight's bedroom window. It was joined by some urgent taps on the glass. Twilight was once again startled, and a pair of small plastic toys bounced off the windowsill before the latch was telekinetically lifted to let Rainbow Dash in the room. Rainbow, Twilight said, hoping she wasn't blushing as furiously as she thought she was. What are you doing here? Rainbow Dash blinked down at Twilight. 
uh, I said I was coming over today to borrow the new Daring Do book. She flitted to the other side of the bed, narrowing her eyes at Twilight. What were you doing? Nothing, Twilight lied. Because it looked like you were playing with dolls. They're resin models. Rainbow Dash blinked again and then fell to the floor <laughs> laughing. Oh, jeez, Twilight, she said in between gasping laughter. Playing with dolls? Wait, I mean resin models. She laughed even harder, ignoring Twilight's increasingly dour glare. Clambering to her hooves, Rainbow turned to head down the stairs, still laughing. Okay, okay, I'll leave you alone with your dolls. Hey, Spike, you'll never guess what I just saw. A moment passed while Twilight glared after Rainbow, before the drawer to her end table opened. One of the plastic models was stored, and another withdrawn. It was an awesome day in Cloudsdale. The sun was shining, the birds that were also horses were singing, and Trixie was making out with Rainbow Dash. Oh yeah, Rainbow Dash said as she fondled anatomically incorrect Trixie. This is awesome! Twenty percent cooler. Rainbows and dashing. Yes, say more catchphrases to Trixie, Trixie said as she wrapped her hooves around Rainbow Dash. Tell Trixie about the Wonder Bolts. Oh yeah, Rainbow Dash reiterated. I'm so awesome, I get away with not doing my work and barging in on ponies any time of day because I am so awesome. I'm going to be an awesome Wonderbolt someday, even though I'd never practice or do the necessary work. I'm really fast at everything. Yes, Trixie loves quick, unsatisfying <laughs> Okay, now I'm a little freaked out. A pair of plastic toys rebounded off Spike's forehead, drawing a yelp from the little dragon. Twilight spun to look over at the stairs again where Spike stood. Rainbow Dash hovered behind him, a hoof rubbing the back of her head as she tried to look almost anywhere but at the unicorn. Uh, Rainbow? Look, I can explain. Spike leaned down and picked up the two toys in his claws, which he gingerly deposited on Twilight's bed. They were both bright blue plastic models of ponies. One was a unicorn with a very light, bordering on grey mane and a purple wizard's hat, while the other was a plastic pegasus decorated with a rainbow-coloured mane and tail. He sighed. Twilight, you've gotten really weird since Trixie dumped you. That was. Hang on. Uh, on a somewhere. <laughs> Twilight Sparkle plays with dolls. Isn't she a bit too old to play with dolls? Okay. It was written by Cyanide. Read by Scribbler and SFM done by Solar. Right. I would like to kick things off by saying sorry. Solo can't do this at the moment because he's kind of um, dead to the world. Poor bloke, he's trying to move quite a few images out of his head. He's had to listen to that to the audio so many times he's actually started to memorise the whole story. He's even in time for Scribble when, when she reads it. So, yeah. Solo's dead. Oh, and I'd also like to say, say thank you to Scribbler for letting us do this. If you haven't heard her work, where the hell have you been? 20th century? Anyway, go and have a look around the channel. There's quite, quite, quite a lot of really good readings there. So, take a pick. So, yeah. Thank you, and see you later. Uh, um, uh, 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 uh. Wow, they even sang all right. You really are cute when you blush. Shut up! I'm not saying a word. 
Right, um, thank you for watching and have a good evening. Well, I thought that went quite well. Chris and Scribbler sitting in a tree. K I S S. You finish that song and I'll use you for spare parts. Just help me with Sola. He's got working around. The last thing we need is for him to bloody crash the work down again because he can't figure out which lane he's supposed to be in.